another episode of Outcast to Icons. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying this series, please do leave a like on the video. Now, we're at the day. Oh, we've had some interesting... I don't know what noise I just made there. We're at the day. Yeah, so we lost 2-0 in our opener against Kwame, and I wasn't really sure what to make of it, if I'm honest. It was one of those situations where I thought to myself, well... I felt like our tactic is still having time to gel, and the fact is, it's still not getting any better. Like, they are just not even... It's not improving at all, and I just think that maybe is because we're semi-professional, so I don't know if we're ever going to get our tactics even vaguely fluid, because at the moment, it's just making no progress, and we've been doing it for, like, four months now, and there's just virtually zero progress on the tactic front, which is a bit of a pain. In fact, it actually went down at one point, which we went on into... There was an international break, and the tactic actually went down even further, so I really don't know what's going on there, uh, which is a bit of a pain. But we have brought in a couple of new signings. I'm just going to show you now. So where did we get to? Uh, right, yeah. Okay, so we would brought in Gary uh, Brusutil. Uh, that was the last signing we made. We've made a few more since then because I looked at those positions that we needed to strengthen and I went out and signed players. Also, we brought in... This This is the guy I was talking about that we were sort of in the process of signing up before. This is Dennis Sintik. Sorry, Sit Sitnik or Sitnik. Um, obviously, he's still trying to get into good Nick rather than bad Nick, um, rather than shit Nick. Um... But yeah, so he's going to be sort of our... I think that he's probably going to start games probably as our sort of first-choice striker because he's a better player. Um, it just took us a little while to actually get him to come in, basically. So yeah, and I think we've, we've seen some differences since he's joined. He's a decent enough player, so I'm glad to have him on board. Next up is Kyle Gerrada, who is still trying to get his match fitness up uh, at the moment. We've played him a couple of times, as you can see. I think he's a good enough goalkeeper. He's definitely going to be our first choice once we get his match fitness set perfectly. And it nearly is there now, so that's good. Four-star, four-star, me likey. Still, you know, only 27. He's kind of in his peak at the moment and next up is steve agius um he's a sort of left-sided utility player so we can play him anywhere down this left side and that's kind of why i got him in because he can play so many down positions still getting his match fitness up as is everyone else we played a lot of reserve games i've added some extra reserve friendlies to try to just get match fitness for a lot of the players and i think that's the best way to do it now actually it's just to arrange lots of reserve team friendlies to get the other players that aren't always in the team to keep their match fitness going uh, next up is carl pulo who's one that my scouts were banging on about for ages and i have to say i've just gone for it and said right we need a left winger and i have to say he's been great for us so far and you'll see why um, when I show you the sort of stats over the first few games. Again, match fitness still needs to improve for him, and he's still b building up a decent sort of level of condition. And finally, Timothy Tabone Dizira um, is coming as a right-back replacement, and he looks pretty damn good as well. We actually signed him from Hibernians. So, again, what I would say, though, is if we can keep ourselves in this division, I would feel that this is our biggest achievement to date, purely because, you know, we struggled a lot with HIFK, fine. Against that, with that Hironis, of course we managed to do two solid finishes in that league, where it said we were favourites for the relegation, but what I would say about that is, in that division, it looked to me like if you could just get a couple of players ready um, and get a decent tactic, you could achieve pretty much anything, so I don't feel it was that much of a big deal for us to actually stay up. I felt that with the team we had, we should have easily stayed up, and we did. Um, so for me, I think our biggest achievement to date would be if we could keep uh, Zuria in this league, and that's currently what we're on to do. So let's take a little look at the fixtures. So in our next game, it was a poor one. It was it was a shame to lose it by a penalty when we weren't actually that bad in this one. It was annoying because the penalty was actually the first shot they'd had and I had to switch it then to overload to try and get it back and they had an, obviously a couple more and it was a pain because we then of course, you know, uh, Batania was sent off in conceding the penalty so we were just... Yeah, it kind of ruined us there, and Axel uh, Jura also picked up an injury, so it began, and it was disappointing, but I felt there was a lot of positives from the game. Like, we had a few shots, we need to up the uh, old uh, <laughs> accuracy of them, but the possession was decent, we didn't look too bad. We created some chances, just weren't able to put them in there, and I felt, I was a little bit worried, but then we went out on our next game, and finally I saw something in us. This was uh, Sitnik's first game for the team, of course, but we were fantastic against Hibernians. Yeah, we didn't get so much of the possession, but my god, Sitnik put us in front on three minutes before Clive uh, Sailor, or just Sailor, managed to make it 2-0 on 61 minutes, both of which were assisted by Carl Pulo on that left wing. It was fantastic. Then they got on back through Nafti uh, with two minutes to go, which was disappointing, but thankfully we went straight down the other end and Sasha Abela on off the bench made it 3-1 and I was oh, glowing with happiness at this point. And you look at the condition of some of their players. If anything, they're actually worse off than us, so we're maybe not doing as bad as we think we are when it comes to condition. Uh, that's what I would say. Perhaps we're even ahead of the curve, so other teams have got the same issues we do, and that's important to note. Uh, in our next match, we were away against Laya. Or Laya? Laya? I, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. Now, this was a, a very strange game, in the sense that we took the lead through Sitnik, and it was glorious. And again, we will look at the you know stats of this game. We were the better team, and it was good. And they were bottom of the league. Uh, no, not bottom just above bottom of the league at this point. Unfortunately, David Cesar equalised for them. 
which was a shame because I thought it was offside personally. He looked to me to be offside, but we'll take it. It was one all. Then they actually went ahead with 10 minutes to go through Karyan uh, Buagba. And I was shocked because we played so well. Thankfully, they got a... I mean, actually, I have to show you this because, yeah, it was one of those goals. Um, you will not see this again probably in the entire save, frankly. So I thought Sitnik was going to nick around the goalkeeper, but no, it's hit into midfield and Bayada just smashes it from the halfway line back of the net. Like, admittedly, they did create two clear-cut chances to none for us, but we did create a lot more just in general. And that's always a good thing, really. My screen just went blank for some reason. Hopefully that won't have affected the video. I don't suppose it will have done. Anyway, so there we go. Um, in our next match, this was the one that's most disappointed me. This it actually is the most disappointing one we've had so far. Um, it is against Sliema. And the reason I was most disappointed, because as you can see, apart from possession, it was a fairly even game. And we took the lead through Dylan Fennick just after half time to make it 1-0. And that was good. Lovely stuff. No problem. Then, irritatingly, we conceded a penalty and Bacare was able to put that in and make it 1-1. I and mean, I would have taken a point away from home, I suppose. But then we ourselves won a penalty and Simone Batania dispatched it. And with 12 minutes to go, we're 2-1 up. And then, unfortunately, no matter what I did, it just happened. We conceded another bloody penalty. And Clifford Gatt... Baldacino dispatched it, and then John Mintoff sneaked through, and they actually managed to win this one, and I was disappointed because we conceded two penalties, and that's the third penalty we'd conceded this season. Three penalties already in the first five matches is a bit of a worry, considering we're not even on any particularly harsh tactics, which is the uh, the main issue for me on that one. I was a little bit disappointed for that. So I don't think we were really deserved of the defeat there, but I suppose you're going to get your luck and you're going to get your uh, bad luck in times. So here's how the league's looking at the moment. We're 10th currently, and as you can see, they're all guaranteed the playoffs. Now, the reason that's the case, I think, is because of the way that the person who built this database has built it. Meaning that that second round of fixtures count as a playoff, I think. Uh, like, sorry, the third round of fixtures. So, ignore that, basically. What I'm looking at the moment, though, and what I'm liking is the fact that, yeah, okay, we're down there. But, the team that, like, I think there's one automatic and one playoff spot. And I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure that Zeeburg... Rovers or Rangers look absolutely screwed. Five defeats on the bounce, and I'm hoping that they continue to do that. And as you can see, I mean, Birkirkara or Birkirkara, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, again, and Valletta are flying away at the top, as you would expect, and they will continue to do so. I mean, look, Elford Aliu has already got 11 goals this season for Valletta, uh, which is crazy. And of course, yeah, he just pretty much scored every single one of their goals. They're actually the reigning champions, so fair play to them. Um, so that's how that's shaping up for us at the moment. So again, I my plan is to try and sort of just solidify if we can sort of work on trying to get like a point a game then all is well that that's the home form is going to be crucial we have been using that new tactic as well for pretty much every game because the systems they've been playing against us have been ridiculous they've all been kind of no, not a single time have we faced a 4-4-2 yet this season so i've been having to use our sort of more experimental systems again if apologies if you can hear a sort of squeaking in the background that's the birds singing it's a uh, very cinderella they're going to dress me in a minute uh, not that i'm not dressed so, let's take a look at the squad, actually, so you guys can see. That's not the one we want, is it? Um, that being said, you can sort of see who our best players are now. Batania, Mbono, Pulo, uh, Sitnik. All basically players I've signed, which I'm quite happy with for that to be the case, if I'm honest. Obviously, it's knocked down the uh, abilities of some of our current players, but I don't know. I feel like there's also some potential from some of our youngsters to, uh, yeah, certainly challenge for places. And I'm going to be looking forward to them doing that in future. Anyway, let's take a little look at the stats, which is what we're actually here for. Um, actually, I want to go on custom. I think it's this one. Nope, that's not the right one. Sorry, they're all from my other saves. That is not the right one either. It's the middle one, goddammit. And this one. Uh, it's close enough. Right, top goal scorer, of course, is Sitnik with two and three, which is pretty solid. The others have all got one. As for assists, Sitnik has two of those as well. I thought Pulo had two assists. Okay. Uh, but Sitnik's done well since he's come in. Really solid. Player of the match, we've had Bayada and Grek getting man of the matches, which is kind of cool. Uh, yellow cards, Gresh. Also, I was told that I could appeal that red card that we got, and then it got... Yeah, they didn't rescind it. That's the second time I've done that on this save. Uh, Batania, of course, has a red card. Average rating. Sitnik's done well. Bayada's done well. As has Gretsch. Um, key arrow challenges, 11 for Gretsch. Um, key passes, we've got 7 for Bayada and Fenech. And key tackles, 7 for Gretsch. He's looking solid, actually. I'm really liking his work. Interceptions, again, 64 for him. And, of course, value at the most is Mbono. But Pulu's up there as well, so that's good. Let's get into the match preview screen, then, and see what we're going to come up against today. <gasps> a 4-4-2! My God. Notice that we don't even have squad numbers. That Again, we haven't had to register anybody or anything like that, which is quite useful, I'd like to think. Um, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm thinking we're going 4-4-2 diamond wide here because it's a 4-4-2. I'm thinking that's probably our best approach for today. Plus, it will enable us to sort of... Yeah, I'm thinking use it. And again, we've still not got anyone that's sort of fit for that left-hand side, which is a bit of a pain because players like... 
uh, Pulo, again, their match fitness is still not there and they're still getting their match fitness back up in reserve games. I really should do that. But at least the full first team squad is looking a little bit better now. We've got some players that look at least slightly more ready. Let's see if we've got anyone on the bench that can play left midfield. Mm, okay, well, we might have to just... Bear in mind, I, I still think that's a fairly strong-looking team. Um, so for now, I'm, I'm happy to go with that for this game. It, it's important. I don't know exactly where Nacht are in the league. Unfortunately, because of the way that system works... This isn't being updated properly, which is a bit of a pain. So let's just check where Naxa are in the league. They're actually third place, so this could be a bit of a tough one for us. I don't know what my mouse is doing there. Right, let's submit that team then, when I can eventually find the submit team button. We'll get there eventually. Um, okay, well, apparently they're going to have a comfortable victory, but I don't know. I feel like we could at least give them a test. Um, against a 4-4-2, I still haven't figured out how to get my opposition instructions back. Um, I have to make them during the game, basically. So it's, it's really strange, and I do have my assistant set to help me, so I don't understand what's going on. Um, I also know what's going on with my mouse. Right, let's do this. Let's see if the 4-4-2 diamond wide will work in Malta. That's a horrific first touch there from Fenech, who's meant to be our, one of our best players. He's the captain as well. Rizzo. Uh, I don't know where the other characters from Greece are, though. Cesar. Tambone. Please don't concede in the first minute. That would be kind of awkward. Come on, get in there. Get a foot in. Rizzo cutting inside at least. That's about, uh, well done. Good tackle. Razak now. He's dropped quite far back, but we've got support up front for once. Butaji. He's quite far forward, so Razak. Is he playing as our sort of like attacking midfielder today? I, I couldn't see uh, Razak. He's got two players on him and it's cleared away, but I don't really know where the highlight was in that. That was a strange one. I'd like to think that the 442 diamond wide will continue to work. Uh, oh dear. That's shocking. Come on, guys, really? Let them score with their first shot. I mean, it's a two minutes in, so fair enough, but like. We shouldn't be letting them do that. Um, we might have to switch to our other tactic. Our pass completion so far has been terrible. Then again, we've barely touched the ball in the first two minutes of this game. Um, like, There's two players around him. They should both be right on him. Look at that. That's shocking defending. <laughs> that is just terrible. Um, right, let's see if we can get an instant reply. Although if we were to concede a second, we may have to switch tactics. Termile. Falzon. Bear in mind, these guys are probably one of the better teams in this league, it would appear. But then again, we, we still can't afford to start going on a losing streak. I've seen some hilarious defending at times in this save already, but particularly at this team. There was one point where one of their players had the ball in our box, and... Oh, come on! Two shots, two goals. Are you serious? Um, we're letting them do this. Right, okay. Um, it's only four minutes gone, though. It's just difficult to tell if it's just early blips or if this is actually just going to be the pattern of the game. Oh, again, just stick a leg out. Anything. I oh, know they don't seem particularly bothered about actually getting to loose balls, which is a pain. And I'm not entirely sure why that is, says our Termile. They've still only had two shots. I guess that's a good thing. But they'll probably score with their third shot as well. Long ranger, perhaps, or just knock it into the channel. Um, pushing them back, I guess, at least. But we're, we're, I think we're going to have to change the tactic here and go back to the one we've been using. Lately. How did he let that go through him? Three shots, three goals. Unbelievable. Um, okay. That's incredible. And I'm not even that surprised. Right, we're going to have to switch things up because... Obviously, the 442 diamond does not work against whatever they're doing, so that much is very, very clear. Um, I'm also going to bring on Mbunu in that midfield area, just because we need him. We need a little bit of extra in there. Uh, I'm also going to flip those two round, like so. Um, it's not really ideal for him, really. Um, but oh, there's two Butigig. Right, that's where I got confused. Um, I'll make another substitution in a bit to get Roderick Bayada on, but not immediately. It's only 12 minutes into the game. We can't afford that just yet. Um, I don't know how much of a difference this is going to make, but if it can't get any worse than conceding from there for from three shots, <laughs> I mean that is clinical. I'll give them that. Look at that. The defenders just don't even try. They're walking through us at times, and that's disappointing. Uh, right, let's see if we can at least stop them from scoring with their fourth shot. You know, that'd be at least progress. Um, I'm really disappointed considering how well we've actually played as of. There we go, at least we stop stopped that. Um, we have been decent lately, and that's that's a shame to see this suddenly come crashing down on us like that. And bear in mind, Gerard is not a bad goalkeeper, but there's nothing he can do about those situations. That's not down to him, that's down to the defending. Butigi, Sitnik. This is where we turn this around and win 4-3. It's not going to happen, guys. If anything, we're probably going to lose by more goals. Ball into the channel. Fouls on here. Good touch, and it's well won by Ferrugia. That's better defending. At least he's got a foot in that time. That's a terrible outlet, though. Brinchat. We oh, but Tanya, and again, a poor touch, and that's going to be a goal as well, isn't it? And, oh, good save. Thank you. Goalkeeper finally in a situation where he can actually make a difference himself. Um, I think we might just have to accept that they're the better team in this one. <laughs> that is worrying. Um... They've been insanely good in this first few minutes. Right, at least we've had a shot now. And we're starting to get a bit more possession. But that is it at the moment. Um, it's tough. Fouls on with the free kick. And uh, the rebound. 
You don't get the luck when you need it, do you? <laughs> tamili has been absolutely fantastic for them today. I think that's his hat-trick. It might even be more than that. Um, four clinical chances, four goals. I mean, they've been clinical. Even getting the old rebound goals as well now. Um, I love my defenders all running the other way when there's... The ball's not clear. What are you doing? Shocker. We're going to be 4 nil down at half-time. This is terrible. Um, yes, they're dominating us. I would love it if you'd have told me that before the game. Yeah, we are disappointed. Bloody disappointed as well. Um, but I don't know what we can really change other than to... I'm actually tempted to switch to our other tactic because it has shoot on sight as part of it. And it might just be, I don't know, a little bit more needed. Uh, let's just see. What about where does he play? He's a right-sided player. This is poor. Um, right, okay. We're going to bring Britannia in there. Put Mbonu up there. And then we're going to bring off him and put on... Uh, Camilleri. Yeah, well, it's not much of an improvement, but at least it's fresh legs, I suppose. Um, and we are going to go attacking. It's just going to try to get some shots on target in this game. It is just a shocker of a, a match, frankly. Um, I suppose it's like a perfect storm. There we go. Finally a few shots. Oh, for fuck's sake. Captain's injured. Okay, luckily we've got plenty of midfielders. That's one area where we are not lacking, thank God. But that is our last substitution now, unfortunately. Um... So hopefully we won't get any more injuries. And now, of course, now that I've said that, we will get at least three. <laughs> oh, dear. You have to laugh, really, because otherwise you'd cry. Um, we've looked a little bit better since we've changed the formation, but not enough to actually make any real difference. We're going to go over low for the last ten. Just try and get a couple of goals back. Boost the goal difference, if nothing else. It, it's disappointing. It really is. When you concede with the first three shots of the game and then you're just completely hamstrung for the rest of it. Friendo. He's not my friendo, that's for sure. Oh, what a finish. Oh, good lord. Um, that's a shocker of a performance, just about all round there. And obviously there are tactical mistakes all over the place, of course. But really, 5-0? Disappointing. It is a bit of a disappointment, has to be said. That is a shocker. Um, hopefully we won't have too many games like this, really, because we need to try and get better than that. I just wish we hadn't lost that last game when we were winning. And it just seemed to flip all of a sudden. But that's a poor one. But again, at least Zeebug... Well, they haven't actually played yet. That's disappointing. I was not what I wanted in the live comp, considering we've been so much better than that in the last couple of games. So I apologise for that. I can only apologise. Um, but we're doing our best, is all I can really say. It, the tactics just aren't gelling. And even if I change... The problem is now, though... I'm sure you've got lots of tactical tips on how we can change it, but the more I change the tactics, the less they're going to work in a way because they're going to be even less fluid. And at the moment, they are awkward at best. So until such time as we've got any kind of tactical fluidity, which we just aren't going to get, I just don't think. That's the problem. Um, so let's check out what we're going to be doing in the next episode. Well, oh, I'll tell you what we should be doing. We'll do Zebo. That game's going to be absolutely crucial. If we can win the home game against Zebo, then... Who knows what we can do. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. And if you've liked it even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and Red Star Belgrade in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the Zebo game, which could be absolutely crucial if we can't pick up some more well-needed points between now and then. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.